Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with David Floyer. We're with Wikibon.org, and this is Silicon Angle's The Cube, our continuous coverage of EMC World 2013. We extract the signal from the noise. We bring you the best guests that we can find. We like to call them tech athletes. Chris Flash is here. He's Vice President of Global Delivery with CSC. We're unpacking Viper, software-defined storage. Uh, Chris, welcome to The Cube. Thanks, David, glad to be here. Now, you guys are uh, a beta customer of, uh, of this so-called Project Born. Now we know it is, is Viper, and we're going to go you know, deeper into that. Uh, but let's start with CSC and what your role is at the company. We've had a number of folks on from CSC in the past. You guys are a great service organization. What do you do there, and, and what's your role? Well, David, I own all the storage and compute assets for the company, and so roughly um, $1.8 billion P&L, all storage and compute for CSC. Uh, okay, so uh, so you has help manage the infrastructure delivery, is that right? Or is it more managed services or a combination? So, uh, I have full P&L responsibility. So, everything from uh, offering uh, introduction, uh, all the way back through uh, the, what we think of as traditional product management for storage as a service offerings, uh, compute as a service offerings, um, uh, mainframe offerings, uh, the, the whole the whole infrastructure piece. Yeah, you guys are a you know, massive global organization. You do pretty much, customer says this is what I need, you say okay, and figure out how to do it. So you've got a diverse set of offerings from an infrastructure standpoint, uh, I would imagine. Is that, is that right? Uh, in this case, diversity is, <laughs> was not the goal. Well, it just sort of <laughs> happened that way. Exactly, over the last exactly right. Years, it was, right? Uh, it was, um, uh, it was uh, a long <laughs> evolution <laughs> to get to the kind of diversity that we have. Uh, and that's part of the challenge. And so, uh, establish our, our uh, offering standards, uh, having uh, standard architectures, having uh, standard deployment uh, uh, approaches and technologies, um, is really a big part of our, of our go forward strategy uh, because that defines our 2B state. Um, in terms of our, uh, all of our legacy uh, systems, being able to take a product like Viper, for example, and virtualize uh, big parts of our storage estate and look at that as one resource is, a, is absolutely critical to us and one of the reasons why we're so interested in it. Yeah, I mean one of the hard parts for somebody in your role over the last 20 years has been every, you know, there's a controller for every API out there, right? That's <laughs> like exactly right. You get a lot of different controllers and, and, and in a big way, you know, EMC was part of the culprit along with some others, but, but you got to like the move that they're making. So talk about, you're a beta customer of Viper, uh, talk about your initial experiences and then we'll get into the sort of business benefits. Right, so uh, we started working uh, with EMC uh, last year on this, and um, and really our goal was to get it rolled out in a uh, uh, in a proof of concept environment, and uh, we put it out in our Ottawa labs here uh, within the last three months. We took um, a good portion of our uh, technology teams and uh, implementation teams through it. Uh, the goal of which was to become familiar with it, but also to give feedback uh, to our EMC partner as to those things uh, and to. To, um, uh, to emphasize and prioritize those elements of it that were most critical to our use cases, the multi-tenancy and, and those kinds of things. Yeah, so it seems that um, EMC is aiming this, at least initially, at service providers like yourself, the multi-tenancy aspects, but so we were talking before about sort of the different infrastructure components that you have. How do you envision a software-defined storage infrastructure as changing that? Will it allow you to sort of standardized and consolidated, or do you still see that you're going to have to maintain that sort of separate stovepipes for quite some time to come? Well, you know, the, the answer, as is often in these cases, is all, is all of the above, mm. right? Um, is that uh, the most important thing for us in our go forward strategy is to define that to be state. What are our standards? What uh, technologies? What uh, products? Which uh, partners are we going to standardize on? And EMC is obviously a big part of that. In terms of the legacy environment, um, we know that this is not an overnight fix. Uh, Software-defined storage is a, um, is a big part of that. It's the least virtualized element in our data centers. Uh, but we also recognize that we, we need to add uh, a, the software-defined networking and compute to that to help virtualize more of our infrastructure, which quite frankly is uh, uh, is not as virtualized as it might be, and certainly not uh, to the degree that uh, it's going to be necessary in years going forward. Mm. So, uh, let's talk about the as is. You, you, we, we talked about the 2B a little bit. And describing whatever detail you want, how would you describe your existing 
you know, infrastructure. We talked about a lot of different components sure. and so forth, but let's set it up and then we'll talk about the, the future Nirvana. Yeah, sure, yeah, I, 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 I use that term myself occasionally. <laughs> um, because, uh, because the current state is essentially uh, 67 data centers uh, spread around the globe. Um, and uh, in that it's uh, upwards of um, uh, 100,000 uh, x86 boxes, um, 75,000 or so um, uh, mid-range boxes of uh, some description, um, uh, petabytes and petabytes of storage, some of it virtualized, some of it not. Uh, and you know, as we all know, that this is a, uh, this, this is all part of, of you know, where we came from, our legacy, having taken many of our customers' environments in that your mess for less, if you will, uh, uh, business model uh, of the last 25 years in information technology outsourcing and, and, and taking it in. It's now, the tools are mature enough, uh, our partnerships are mature enough in the industry to, to finally take advantage and I think to, to really make great strides in that, in that, in that in that uh, direction. So one of your big challenges is you got to move faster, right? You're seeing, you know, yep. Amazon go like crazy and spinning the flywheel and, and 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 so now granted it's easy to say okay, that's public cloud, we don't have to participate, but you can't put your head in the sand when you see innovations like that. So you have to move faster. How does software defined storage or does it allow you to move faster? Well, it 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 does because uh, you're no longer constrained by uh, the traditional cloud approach which is uh, make things as homogeneous as possible so as to uh, keep the variables uh, to a minimum. Um, the, the value of having this software defined uh, 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 storage is that uh, it not only accounts for but embraces the diversity that we have in our storage estate uh, and, um, uh, and the fact that uh, we can create our own APIs for example. So uh, even if it may not be uh, a compelling market decision for a third party to make that API, we can make our own decisions, our own investment decisions in that, integrate it into the product, and it becomes a, a differentiator for us in the market. So I want to make sure I understand So you're saying that you may have some, some IP, some other function that you've developed, uh, and, and that you can uh, leverage that platform through a set of APIs, and even innovate through your own set of APIs. Exactly right, and that's uh, and so the 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 architecture, the underlying architecture of of, uh, of, of Viper is quite um, is quite innovative in that way, and uh, and quite modern. And so, um, again, we're in a competitive environment just like everybody else is, and we need to be in a position to make the decisions that are best for our business, based on things as as uh, proprietary and individual as the, the particular location and makeup and contents of a, of a data center, for example. Uh, and so being able to implement uh, Viper in that way and, uh, and, and develop our own APIs for, uh, for the various storage arrays we have um, is, is a really valuable aspect. So let's go through an example. So, so you guys do a fair amount of business with, uh, with, with, within you know, sort of SAP environments, I'm sure, right? So mm -hmm. you've got you to do some level of integration uh, EMC's obviously put a lot of effort into that, but it's put a lot of brute force effort, frankly. A lot of people and a lot of right. you know, engineering resource. How will a software-defined storage approach generally, and Viper specifically, accelerate that integration? And, and where is CSC's value add in that? Well, the, the, the issue is one of, of um, for all of our customers, uh, we typically weren't there when the decisions were made for the infrastructure that they have in place. And so, um, recognize that there's going to be no perfect system, no perfectly integrated system uh, that's, that's going to be, um, uh, that, 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 that'll answer all the questions. However, uh, in, a, in a speed to market uh, environment, this allows us to go and integrate in those environments where we had no uh, say in what the original makeup of the of the um, uh, of, of the disk estate was, or of the storage estate was, and puts us in a in a, in a much more competitive environment to where our competitors might have to go in and, and either trade out the estate uh, or spend a lot more time configuring the estate than we would by implementing a um, 
uh, a Viper solution. Because you are delivering this now as essentially as a set of services and you can invoke those That's services correct. As, as, as needed. That's correct. So there's one question I was going to ask you. you. You said you're writing your own APIs. How are you managing Viper yourself? How are you tying that in with your own orchestration level for things like the, the servers and the network, et cetera? How are you tying the whole thing in and, and getting some economies of, uh, of scale and, and economies for your operations? Well, so the, um, the, the, the challenge for us is really, um, I, I think as you indicated in your question there, making, uh, setting those priorities and determining um, uh, where to integrate, number one, uh, which uh, APIs are most valuable for us and, um, and then ultimately in our multi-tenancy environment, being able to come back and say, um, okay, which customers does this affect, right? right. So, um, and, and, and we're currently in the process of doing that, but we okay. have to do it on a by data center, by customer, okay. bottoms up analysis, right? The good news is that when we, when we find out what the answer should be, we now have a tool to implement it in a, in a, in okay. a, in a, in a fast fashion. Right. So, and, you th and that's your direction and you think you'll be able to get to that situation where you can manage it, manage Viper with your own uh, sets of uh, tools. Absolutely, that's, that's our goal and we... Uh, that's pretty we, unique, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I like to think of it as a competitive advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Right, well, congratulations. So do you see, uh, going forward, do you see a majority of your storage going through this or you have got pieces where it's very suitable for? Can you talk about where you see it makes the most value in, well, the, in the data center? You know, the, the issue is really at, of, of prioritizing. And so um, we've identified um, some of our larger and more complex, and in some cases, um, let's say more mature uh, estates uh, to, to take advantage of this because each one of them presents a, um, a unique business case and value proposition both to us as the manager of that system and to our customers. So, um, so we're, we're, uh, uh, we're <laughs> we, we uh, a, uh, a tool like this presents us a tremendous amount of opportunity. Opportunity is not the problem. It's prioritization Extension. and execution. Execution, on exactly it. right. Yes. That's where we are today. Right. So um, you've, you you gave us you know a sense of your early impressions, pretty positive. What kinds of things do you really need EMC to execute on to make a difference in your business? What's on their to-do list in your view? Well, I had some uh, very frank and candid discussions inside of uh, uh, in, with our uh, uh, very capable support infrastructure inside of. Uh, inside of EMC and they've, uh, they've very much uh, uh, made a commitment to this partnership to, uh, to help us, uh, frankly, uh, do a lot of that prioritization and help us do that analysis, which is, quite frankly, in, a, in an environment where we have you know, 67 data centers and, and you know, 3,500 customers and the petabytes of storage out there, which um, uh, uh, that level of partnership uh, involvement has been critical to our adoption of it, and, we, um, and, uh, and that's actually going to be critical to its long-term success. Excellent, Chris Flash, CSC, peeling back the complexity with uh, software-defined storage and transforming your business. Really, good luck with the, uh, with the initiative. It sounds like you got a great business and uh, a competitive one, but uh, also a lucrative one, and one that's in you know, constant transition, I would imagine. So uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. It was uh, great to meet you and hear your perspectives, and really appreciate it. Thanks very much, David. Appreciate All right. it. Yeah. Pleasure. Okay, everybody, keep it right Good there. Luck. We'll be right back. Uh, we'll get, we've got uh, some folks from Isilon coming on. Uh, we're going to go deep into to that side of EMC's business, and, uh, and then we're going to come back to the software-defined piece uh, with Amitabh Sarvastava later on today. So keep it right there. This is Dave Vellante with my co-host, David Floyd. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back after this word.